everyone. How are you? Bringing you a general reading for the collective for the full moon in Sagittarius. It's actually a super moon full moon. Um, it will hit at 7.51 a.m. Eastern time um, here in the States uh, on the 14th, so on Tuesday the 14th. And I just want to mention a couple of aspects for this full moon. You know the full moons are always about culmination, um, especially for a promise of fulfillment for what we started at the new moon just two weeks prior. Um, it's also a culmination from six months ago when we last had um, a new moon in Sagittarius. So, you know, you can kind of look back at the six months um, if you really want to be detailed. But for most of us, we just take it one lunation <laughs> at a time, two weeks, two weeks. Um, so we're closing out the last lunar cycle. Um, and yeah, it is about release. It's about gratitude. It's about release. It's about um, letting go of things that might be in the way of achieving your goals or uh, manifesting your dreams, goals, or intentions. So keep that in mind. But here are a couple of interesting aspects that this particular moon is making. And I do have the chart of the actual full moon here that I'm referring to. That's that's what it looks like. So the first thing of note is, you know, we do have the sun and the moon, sun and Gemini full moon in Sagittarius. They're at opposition, which means there's a little bit of um, tension. And um, we have Gemini, which is... <sighs> It just happens to be lower mind. All that means is 3D based thinking, 3D based ideas in the here and now. Sagittarius is the higher order thinking. It's more spiritual, right? Jupiter is the ruling planet, used to be the ruling planet originally of Pisces. So there is this spiritual um, high minded, higher, higher order thinking energy around Sagittarius, even though that's the this Jupiter is the planet of expansion and travel and abundance and good luck and fortune and all that fun stuff. There is some higher spiritual realm to Sagittarian energy opposite the sun, which is more about the flight of ideas in the moment, about help, helping us to get things done and think quickly. The good news is Mercury is now in Gemini, just moved in there today one de at one degree. So he's in um, one of the signs that he rules and he's comfortable there. Venus is in Taurus, one of the signs she rules. She's happy there. And she happens to be in a conjunction with Uranus. And Uranus is the great awakener, right? And it's kind of the miracle maker. So I love that Venus is kind of holding hands there with the miracle maker in a gentler aspect, not as much of an opposition, in a gentler aspect to the moon. So in matters of the heart, there could be something unexpected. There could be some surprises. There could be some awakenings. There could be some miracles. Just want to let you know. Um, we also have Mercury in, um, I'm sorry, Mars in Aries, and that's where he's comfortable, that's one. That's a sign he rules. And he's holding hands at the exact same degree, 15 degrees of Aries with Chiron, the wounded healer. So the good news is as we try to embody um, all the energies coming in, we're going to be held in a safe space. In other words, we're gonna be given a soft place to land so that Mars doesn't run roughshod over this more sensitive full moon for many of us. Um, and the last aspect, which is a little bit more challenging, is the moon and the sun making a square to Neptune. Um, Neptune is in Pisces, where he is comfortable. So the problem here is, is that when we have a square, right? I mean, let me do it this way, right? It's where the floor meets the wall. There's no give there. It's a very difficult, harsh geometric aspect in astrology. And what that's saying is things may be fuzzy, while we're searching for the higher spiritual meaning um, of what's going on in our connections, we may have the fog machine, <laughs> okay, um, getting in the way. So I'm taking all that into consideration as I do this reading. Um, and as you know, when I do the extended, I go all through all the signs, Aries through Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. So you have plenty of opportunities to get personalized messages for you. Um, more personalized than here for a general collective of all signs is what I'm, I mean by that. So let me get started by pulling from Sacred Traveler. We'll see what energies are coming through, what messages are supporting us during this full moon in Sagittarius. 
for all signs. I said it, miracles. There's Uranus. Embracing enthusiasm. This is absolutely Sagittarian energy. Um, very enthusiastic and exciting. Oh, and there's the grace and gratitude. I like when this comes in for a full moon um, because that's where we want to begin. Through gratitude, joy expands. So as you embrace enthusiasm, don't forget to include your gratitude list for people, things, situations, experiences that you've had for which you are really grateful. That lets the um, universe know, I'd like more of that, please. So I love that message for all of us. And now let me get this over here. And I'll do this reading for all signs, sun, moon, rising, Venus. Especially those of you who are mutable, we have the mutable energies of, let me make sure I have it right. I don't wanna get it wrong. Hold on. Gemini and Sag are mutable signs. So if you have Gemini or Sagittarius, sun or moon mostly um, could be okay for rising too, but mostly sun or moon, um, as well as the other two, Pisces and Virgo. So if you have Pisces, Virgo, Gemini, or Sagittarian energy in your chart, your sun or your moon especially, um, this full moon may have more of an impact for you. Uh, especially closer to the degree, let me just say that, um, do I have that? Yeah, 23 degrees. So if you have any planets in Gemini, Sagittarius, any planets, Gemini, Sagittarius, Pisces, and Virgo, around 23 degrees, give or take three degrees. So like 20 to 26 degrees of those four signs, this moon may impact you more so than everyone else. Now I'm sun in Virgo, but I'm 18 degrees. So I'm just a hair's width away <laughs> from being caught up in that. But I usually feel full moons regardless. So I am expecting this one to be expansive. I'm seeing it as a positive. Here we go, Whew. King of Wands under the deck. High Priestess crossed by, Six of Swords wanting to get to calmer waters. Yes, and not knowing the way because with High Priestess, we're entering the reading here, um, operating on intuition. Um, this is Pisces energy. And remember I said that uh, Jupiter, who rules Sagittarius, used to be in, in traditional astrology uh, before um, Neptune was discovered, was the original ruler of Pisces. So that may be the fog machine coming in a little bit and trying to find our way to calmer waters and to get beyond something that has been troubling us in our unconscious awareness. Yeah, we've built up some resistance. Seven of Wands, we're starting to get stronger, wanting to... Um, claim that which we deserve and leave what doesn't right let it go release it with the full moon two of cups in the past beautiful what's crowning us here nine of pentacles i love this this is our independence and autonomy and um sort of you know stepping into our own power and being great right with where we are the nine of pentacles is really um um, a master of the law of attraction. She, I say she because it's a feminine figure in the card, but it can be a male. Um, you know, things kind of are drawn to her fairly easily, right? She becomes a mirror to the universe for what she desires. And the more she takes care of herself and her, her own life and her own home and focuses on what serves her highest good, the more of that is, is, is attracted to her, is drawn to her. Got it. So I love it. Now, the issue with the nine of pentacles is she does represent a single person in the tarot. So, eh, you know, we may be to some degree flying solo here or planning to. King of cups. Hmm. All right. So I'm just going to go from right there. Uh, the king of wands underneath is about someone who knows what they want. Um, someone who claims what they desire, 
isn't really wishy-washy about it, no hesitation. I do feel sometimes with the King of Wands, um, in a lot of the readings, he does represent someone who's unavailable to us or makes themselves unavailable. So we'll see in a second. Okay, so it definitely represents someone who um, may be a bit of a mystery. There may be a lot of attraction. It can just be Aries Leo Sag, but because this is such a broad reading, I, I kind of want to look at it more as an energy of somebody that just may be um, a little, yeah, not coy. That wouldn't be the King of Wands is never coy, but elusive and mysterious. And I feel like there's information you're, you're seeking here. Queen of Swords, once you get that information, I feel like you want to be kind of direct about it. Uh, what do you want? Where are you headed? <laughs> You know, what path are you walking? Uh, I do feel like this person's a mystery and we have the beautiful air energy of Gemini here. I'm landing on the Aries Leo Sagittarian energy of the King of Wands, but underneath it's all about the questions would be about what does this person want? What do they want? So let's look at the High Priestess and the Six of Swords. Yeah, see, um, I feel like there's been, I feel like the tower moment has already happened or there's been a shift in the picture for what you're going through with your person. And maybe it feels like something could be slipping away or that you need to move away from it with the six of swords. Um, too painful, yeah, just too painful for this beautiful divine feminine energy. I do feel like the High Priestess and the Empress are working in tandem. Um, one here in the earthly realm and one at 5D. We got the 3D, 5D uh, energy coming through from the feminine perspective. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of unconditional love understood, not a problem, but there's some form of pain that I feel almost like when I see this tower, I'm almost feeling like it's a, a repeat that it's kind of, it keeps cropping up because with it under the deck, it's in your unconscious awareness. So it isn't leading you right now, but it's there. And I feel it's there because it's like, you know, uh, once burnt, twice shy kind of coming through. And I feel like the challenge is how do you move away from that? How do you navigate to something calmer that doesn't keep blowing up in your face or um, leaving you brokenhearted? Seven of wands, well, how do you do that? You, you get a bit of a spine. You get your back up a little bit and you say, you know, um, this is what I know I deserve. I'm not going to stand for anything less. You can do that in a loving way. It doesn't have to be bitchy, <laughs> quite frankly. I mean, we're all grown ups. You have a conversation. You have a conversation. What do you want? Because what I keep getting isn't what I want. Yeah. Uh, been there. <laughs> It's like, you're kind of like, what? Uh-uh, no, no more Ten of Swords for me. Um, I do feel with the Two of Pentacles though, on some level, you're keeping the window open. There's this juggling act of, as you're trying to assess realities on the ground with the Page of Swords, get information. As you're preparing to um, call into question what this person's you know intentions are, um, you're leaving some wiggle room here. You're leaving some wiggle room. This is your goal, way buried deep, Six of Pentacles. You want the reciprocity. You haven't gotten it yet, apparently. Um, you're leaving a little wiggle room open, keeping the energy alive. Um, but you're definitely turning your head. I mean, you can just see the visual there where she's like, yeah, no more. No more Ten of Swords, no more painful endings. I'm not all about that anymore. No more tower moments. I'm moving to something much more peaceful and calm where I can get some darn peace of mind, even if I have to fly solo. For some of you, it'll be continue to fly solo. <laughs> Guilty as charged. Two of cups in the past. So here's where things may have gone sideways. King of Wands. Death. Page of Wands. Um, based on everything else that's come through, 
based on everything else that's come through. And that's kind of the way I like to read is uh, very rarely do I have a major plot twist. The energy here suggests to me that this King of Wands, who you're now calling into question their intentions and what they, are, they want, feel like something came to an end here. Um, and possibly because you felt that they didn't know what they want, they weren't making themselves available to you in terms of a reciprocal relationship, but maybe just for getting their own needs met in the moment. Yeah, it happens. So definitely a partnership with lots of chemistry, but I don't think it went very far. Um, that's kind of the storyline I see coming through. And I feel like you've grown tired. Like I keep thinking that that's on repeat. I don't know why, but that's part of the energy that's coming through is that this is a cycle that has kind of repeated itself and ended with you and heartache um, and having to kind of recover over and over and over again. Um, but I'm feeling you stronger now. This is what's crowning you here in your conscious awareness with the Nine of Pentacles. Yeah, I can do this thing called life by myself and still be happy. Interesting. I don't think you're quite there to the I can do it alone and still be happy part. That is a choice you have to make, lovers. And here it is. Nine, this is so great. I like spoke one second too soon. Nine of Pentacles, King of Pentacles, the moon. Fearing you're never going to find the one who shows up for you in 3D and has your back and wants a long-term committed conventional relationship. Right? King of Pentacles, masculine archetype of a life partner in this particular reading. And I feel like that moon is you kind of saying, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure. I can't, I, I don't know what they're feeling. So feelings are hidden but I feel like this is your fears, your insecurities, your moment where you're like really apprehensive about, well, if I have to fly solo, I can still be happy. You're kind of like, I don't know, can I? I'm not sure. So I do feel like there's at this moment, not for all of you, obviously, it's a broad reading for a lot of folks. So just take what speaks to you. Um, I feel like that's a choice that you're kind of toying with, right? That's where you may be torn. Trying to keep some energy alive here for this person to step up and tell you what they want and that they're on the same page, but also realizing that it may not work out that way. Um, and so I do feel you're making, you're preparing to make this choice. Um, and right now you are independent. That's great. But I feel like you're starting to question whether or not this connection will go the distance, whether or not this is life partnership material you're dealing with. King of Cups in the future. Hanged man. King of Cups again. What's underneath there? Six of Swords. Yeah, I feel in time, uh, many of you will decide to move on. Um, just a delay. Uh, absolutely surrendering to the fact that this person may not be emotionally available. A double hit of the King of Cups. Now, of course, water energy, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. But again, because it's such a generalized reading for so many signs, for all of you, in fact, I hate to kind of just narrow the focus there. I feel this is about someone's emotional availability um, and their desire, King, uh, their, you know, availability in 3d availability on an emotional level and availability on a physical level to be right in front of you king of wands i i feel like you're kind of um gonna decide that it's not worth hanging out anymore and i have seen a lot of that in the comments like i'm done it's over and that's okay um most of my readings though do speak about people who want to be together or at least those of you watching wanting to be in connection with someone and really trying to understand what the issues are. This reading is a little bit different. This reading, I see people coming to terms with the fact that it may not be in the cards for them with this person, with the one that's on your mind, because they're not available to you, whether they're in another relationship, whether they're married, whether they're um, still playing the field maybe, whether they, they have commitment issues or you know, whatever it is, I kind of feel like I see some energies of those of you coming to terms with the fact that you may need to shift your direction. I do feel like you're going to give this person 
uh, one more shot to kind of come clean with where they stand and what they're after. Um, but I don't think you're going to hang around much longer. Six of Swords. I feel like you're really going to move on and get beyond what, um, you know, keeps rubbing your nose in it. Oof. No one, no one needs that. Okay. So I'm going to complete the rest of the reading in the extended, but let me tell you what energies came through here. High Priestess is Pisces, Empress is Taurus and Libra. That's a card of Venus. Uh, we have the Tower is Aries. We've got the King of Wands out twice, Aries, Leo, Sag. Death card is Scorpio. King of Pentacles, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Even that Nine of Pentacles is Virgo. Yeah, the King of Pentacles, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. The Moon is Pisces. The Lovers is Gemini. King of Cups is out twice. Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Hanged Man is Pisces. Who Queen of Swords can be Gemini, Libra, Aquarius as well. So that's what came through here. Very interesting. Um, and I love that you're giving over to some higher consciousness. That's what I like. You know, what what scares us sometimes bring us brings us to better choices because we give it more a time and attention we open our mind a little bit more remember the hanged man whoops the hanged man does seek enlightenment does seek that opportunity to um, get some downloads from the divine from spirit so i do feel like this is a decision you will make with um, your higher mind not the lower mind and that you will uh, see your way clear to something that brings you more weight for it peace of mind so let's take it to the extended i'll go all around the zodiac aries through pisces sun moon rising venus complete out the reading and we'll see you there bye for now